should our phones have the right to remain silent, to plead the fifth? I know, it sounds ridiculous, I know, but just hear me out. We already have concepts like doctor-patient privilege, attorney-client privilege, clergy-penitent privilege, spousal privilege, to the absolute best of my hashtag not a legal eagle understanding, and with all the appropriate caveats and limits of scope, in many jurist my dictions, our doctors, therapists, lawyers, priests, Pastors, husbands, wives cannot be compelled to testify or provide evidence against us. But our phones, our phones, which nowadays contain health, legal, location, and deeply, deeply personal data beyond any of our real world relationships, our phones, which have pretty much become extensions of our memory, our knowledge, our senses, to the point where they're indistinguishable from external cybernetics, our phones have no such legal protection. There's just no digital device equivalent to that privilege, no right for our phones to remain silent. They can, and they will be used against us. And who knows, maybe that's right, maybe they should be. Maybe phones really are the simple electronic equivalents of ledgers and receipts and pill bottles and letters and calls and tape recordings, just things that have been searchable, surveillable, seizable, and enterable into evidence for functionally ever. That all intuitively makes a kind of sense that absolutely does, at least to me. But here's the thing, beyond any of the traditional physical items that I just rattled off, our phones are all of that, but also so much more. They don't just contain all of those forms of data or even let us record them when and where we want to. They collect them and store them often passively and all the time, everywhere, always, they know us. They know us just so damn intimately. All of our actions, our connections, our secrets, our kinks, our everythings, like I said, to the point where they're indistinguishable from external cybernetics. And at some other point, at some other point that is soonish, that external part will become internal. We'll go from chips in our phones, our watches, our rings, our ears, two chips in our bodies, our brains. It's absolutely being worked on right now. It has been for years, and it'll be ugly at first, worse than the early handspring phones or Google glasses, but it'll be iterated on, it'll be improved. It'll go from early Shadowrun loving beta testers to mainstream Star Trek adoption. There'll be that iPhone crossing the chasm moment when we all start to dream of electric sheep, and then all of that health, legal, location, and deeply personal data, all of it beyond any of our real world relationships won't be on our phones anymore. It'll be in our heads, in our minds. And as it currently stands, as far as I can tell, probably easily available and accessible by warrant and to absolutely be used against us in a court of law, which means they will come for it. They will find it civilly and criminally not with a bag or a box to take our data away and unlock or crack it, but for us with a skull cable or scalpel to get in and extract it or just pull it live in real time from the perpetual 6 or 7G signal beaming to and from our brain stems and potentially not just for what they catch us doing, not anymore, just because they want to catch us having done something, anything, anytime, and can now scrub back and forth on our timelines like our lives are suddenly some perverse form of hypersensory video player. And I get it. I totally get it. If we've done nothing wrong, then we have nothing to hide, right? If we've never jaywalked or sped or missed a stop sign or watched Game of Thrones without a sub or pushed the limits on our taxes just a tad too far or said something, anything actionable, maybe even felonious in a private moment ever, or, you know, gone to another state or country to do something that's controversially, contentiously illegal in our own, or not. And yes, please feel free to make your own dystopian Philip K. Dick supercut at all of this, because yes, many of us have the privilege, the utterly underappreciated by many of us privilege of living in places and at a time where as a society, we've decided personal rights, civil rights, are important enough that even though it would make law enforcement exponentially, infinitely easier, we just will not be fingerprinted or DNA swabbed at birth. We won't be RFID'd or facial ID tracked or subject to continuous signal collection at all times, always. And even though all of that 
is being violated increasingly, alarmingly, if not routinely yet, we're going to have to, as a society, decide again where our personal rights, our civil rights matter. We're going to have to draw that line where the privilege we have to live in these types of societies demands computer person privilege be also recognized as a matter of law. In other words, if we want it to be our bodies, our persons, our brains, our minds, if we really want them, if we need them to be inviolable in the cybernetic future, I don't know, maybe we need to be seriously considering it with our phones and the right for them to remain digitally silent, plead the fifth Asimov amendment and starting right now, here, today. Otherwise, by the time all of this still currently external technology goes fully internal, it might get really, really ugly or it might just be too late. If you wanna know how I make these videos, check out my Nebula class by clicking on the link in the description or this button right here below. Clicking on that link really helps out the channel and so does checking out this video on the controversy between algorithms and timelines. Just give it a watch and I'll see you there.